Enzo Maresca's new era at Chelsea begins this July. And uh, in our video today, we are going to try and assemble a team that will suit his philosophy. So Enzo Maresca comes from the school of positional play. And positional play, as, may, as a lot of people are trying to do it, it's a very difficult system of play. And therefore, Maresca needs players who know and understand this game and are able to implement the system. So Maresca, similar to Pep Guardiola, will face the challenges that Pep Guardiola experienced at Manchester City trying to play this system. And we are going to try and see where he will face it and which player he needs. Mikel Ateta, Arsenal's manager for five seasons, has really struggled to implement positional play in his system. And actually, the last two seasons is when that system was embedded in Arsenal's team. Now, in our video today, we are going to look at players and the player profiles that will suit Enzo Maresca's positional player system at Stamford Bridge. And I will also do a video why Enzo Maresca is more likely to face problems with his start at Chelsea. And this is something that is going to give Chelsea a lot of problems. So, even before we start our analysis, do not forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share this video with somebody else so that we can improve our channel and more content like this. The first position is the goal Keeper. Now, the goalkeeper position is very uh, tight because this position is a contentious position at Chelsea with very many players looking to fill this position. Now, the goalkeeper saving, uh, uh, saving game is very, very important. But under Maresca, the goalkeeper's key role is that he is the first attacker, meaning that he is the player who actually initiates the first attack. Now, Chelsea has three players this summer with Kepa coming back from Real Madrid with Petrovic and Sanchez all back with Petrovic having played the majority of last season's games as a result of Sanchez's injury and out of form situation. Now, looking at the statistics for Kepa, you can see that Kepa has really had a better uh, save percentage, but his kicking and his passing have been really, really poor. His sweeping has also not been quite great to the elite level and he did not play enough games so that enough data and statistics can be uh, got from him. Looking at Petrovic, Petrovic has really, really uh, underperformed looking at the statistics. He has conceded more goals than he should. His kicking has also been not quite great and his sweeping has also not been quite the best. And uh, this is really putting question on whether Petrovic is the right man to take Chelsea forward the other player was, is robert sanchez but sanchez gives chelsea a uh, dynamism especially aerially he's a very good claimer of the cross and he's also a good sweep of the ball though sometimes he's usually caught uh, away from his goal and this can put the team in jeopardy he's good at his passing but sometimes he's a bit shaky now, looking at these three statistical, you would uh, think that uh, Maresca would only now have to just pick uh, Sanchez out of the three. Because I've told you he needs a goalkeeper who's very good with the ball at his feet. Sanchez is somehow good, but not very good. Sometimes he makes very clumsy mistakes. So Maresca's goalkeeper's main job is to look to try and find the center backs during build-up and actually play as an extra player during build-up together with the centre-backs. She will also be very astute to find the holding midfielder in this position, a player who can receive the ball in that kind of zone. He should also not be afraid to step in midfield and play, step further forward and play and act as an extra centre-back during build-up, something that uh, we've seen Ederson and Ortega. Look at this clip here for Leicester's goalkeeper and you can see Leicester's goalkeeper has stepped into midfield and is actually playing as an extra center back. And this is something that Maresca needs to change. So now Chelsea are actually looking to go and sign two goalkeepers with Bulka, the former Chelsea under 23 goalkeeper, being one of the favorites to be signed to come to Chelsea. Now Bulka is a very good goalkeeper. He's very good on the ball. He's very good aerially. And he's also his save percentage and his saving is also quite great. And I had also I always believed that this player should have been the one who will succeed uh, Kotua at Chelsea, but things did not happen that way. Let's look at the central defenders. So, 
The central defenders I have picked two players who I believe should be the, uh, the starting central defenders for Chelsea. My pick is Tosin and Levi Colwell. I know there will be shouts for Fofana and Benoit, but uh, with the Conference League, those two players can work to build their partnership in the Conference League. But in the Premier League, I believe Tosin and Colwell will be very good complement. Now, in this situation, what you'll realize is that one centre-back needs to be a progressive carrier of the ball, looking to carry the ball from defence on the way to midfield, so that he can create passing angles to look and try to play the ball into the midfielders. And uh, Tosin did that extremely well at Fulham. The other centre-back also it should be very great and should be much more passive compared to the other, looking just to play the ball short and maybe looking to uh, play the ball's uh, line-breaking passes or balls over the top. Something that Colwell did effectively for Roberto Di Zabi at Brighton. So, Tosin, who has played for Marco Silva, was also introduced to the system of positional play that Fulham have tried to implement this season. And therefore, Tosin understands this position quite well. He's, uh, he's 26 years old, so he's an experienced centre-back who's uh, about to enter his prime. And I believe he'll be a very good signing for Chelsea. He's very fast. He's very strong aerially. Colwell, on the other hand, is very calm. He's a very calm centre-back. He's very good with his passing. And then another thing that you need to understand with Colwell playing at centre-back, he's very, very solid. He's very young and has uh, can really improve under the right coaching system. And when he plays, he's, he's usually very calm. You'll not see Colwell making any silly mistakes or anything that can jeopardise the team. He's very good with his passing and I believe he's an excellent defender compared to Benoit. The fullbacks, the fullbacks are very key, and um, the fullbacks in my, in my choice are Marco Curella and Rhys James. Rhys James is the best right back in the league when he's fit, and uh, looking upon his surgery, he should be fit enough to start many games next season. Curella has been the secret of Chelsea's success in the last six games of the Maurizio Pochettino era. Now. The fullback, yeah, Rhys James in this position, it starts to be multi-dynamic, either looking to push forward to try and overlap, or invert in midfield to try and give protection in midfield, especially when the free eights decide to push forward. Remember, Mareska wants his attacking line and the two midfielders to push high up, and one fullback to invert in midfield, or both of them, so that they can give the team numerical solidity in that position. The fullback can also uh, look to start as a right-sided centre-back, something that Rhys James did excellently under Thomas Tuchel. And um, uh, we we'll move on to the left-back position, who, which I believe Kukurela really exemplified. He's a very good inverted fullback. He understands the role. He's very good in uh, passing the ball in very tight spaces, and he's a player who I believe will play uh, very very well in that position now the position of the inverted fullback for Mareska is very key because the fullback needs to know when to invert when to stay out where to give the team uh, space and availability to actually progress the ball uh, higher up the pitch and Mark Kukurela uh, showed in the Maurizio Pochettino's final days how he understands this role and how to secretly come into this position in midfield to enable his team to be able to progress with the ball higher up the pitch. Now, we move on to the holding midfielder. Now, the holding midfielder is a very crucial uh, part of uh, uh, Maresca's system. He's not just a defensive midfielder per se, but a player who's very intelligent in this position. And my pick for this position is Enzo Fernandez. Yes, this might shock you. And uh, though the best player to play this position for Maresca is Romeo Lavia. Now, the, uh, we are looking and hopeful that uh, Lavia can be fit enough next season to actually occupy this position. He understands it. Now, in this position, the player is more dynamic. He's a player who wants to get on to the ball. He's a player who's a, who just wants to pass the ball, who wants to be with the ball, who wants to play the balls over the top, short passes. And that's why I'm picking Enzo Fernandez. Fernandez likes to be with the ball. He's a very, He can be deployed as a deep-lying playmaker. Similar to what uh, Sari did with Jorginho, uh, Fernandez is very key during build-up. We've seen how he likes to play in this position. And he is also very intelligent with the ball. And I believe that his position in this system can really, really benefit Chelsea. And him together, with, given a uh, solid protection by an inverted fullback, will make 
Hernandez play well. He's very good at reading the game, knowing when players are making runs, and he can actually dictate the game from deep using his vision and his passing accuracy to look to play the ball. He's very good and uh, under pressure. He's not afraid to play the ball from the back. He knows how to read the game. He knows how to understand the game. And this puts Fernandez in a position where he does not need to, he can see the pitch and he can actually look to be making those line breaking passes that we saw him make at, uh, at Benfica. And this can really help the team. The next position is the box to box midfielder or the number eight and uh, this is a position of a player who's a number eight just a number eight one who pushes forward during attack and can be used as an as a counter pressing machine and i believe uh, kaisedo can play this position really really well he can be deployed by Maresca similar to what he did with uh, Wilfred Ndidi at Leicester and similar to what Maurizio Sarri came to do with N'Golo Kante at Chelsea in 2019. Now, uh, the role of this uh, number eight will be very, very crucial. He will be a player who will either drop deep to help during build-up and a player who is also quite uh, energetic to actually play up and down. He should also be an excellent presser and know when to drop in midfield to help his other number six and this is why he'll be very good because Caicedo is a better passer of the ball and once he occupies this position he's more likely to free up and open up spaces in this position compared to a person like Kono Galaga. He's very energetic, he's a player who can lead the counter press high up the pitch and once he looks to lead the counter press in these kinds of position he can really give Chelsea a lot of strength and depth in this position. I also believe his tackling ability and his ability to read the game can help Chelsea win the ball high up the pitch, not allowing the ball to even cross over to Enzo Fernandez. And him being in this position, he can be very aggressive during the press, something that Chelsea need. Now, the attacking midfielder that uh, Maresca needs to uh, deploy, the other number eight, is an attacking midfielder who's quite dynamic, opening up the pitch with angles and looking to pick up positions in between the lines. And that player is none other than Cole Palmer, who I believe solidly is the first name on the team sheet. His main aim is to push forward and occupy the uh, right half space position, pick up positioning between the lines to receive the ball from the centre backs, and also join the number nine in looking to actually engage a press. Uh, 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 Palma in this position can look his use his threaded balls. He can attempt to shoot the ball from this position. He can attempt to lead the counter press, and this will be important. Now, looking at the wingers, here is where there will be a lot of questions for Chelsea. My wingers in this position are Olise and Raheem Sterling. Sterling has played under a positional play manager. He understands what is expected. Olise is more likely to come to Chelsea, and I have done a video on him check it out where i believe he's an upgrade on noni madweke but uh, i will not have a, a problem with madweke starting there because uh, mareska wants his wingers to start out high and wide and be very excellent dribblers and this is why mikhailo mudrik does not cut this uh, position because mudrik is not a great dribbler he's rather a player who wants to, the ball to be play uh, kicked in space so that he can make a run but you see, when you're facing lower blocks, you need a player who's very good at 1v1. And I believe Raheem Sterling and, and uh, Nune Madweke or Michael Olise are better than Mikhailo Mudrik in this position. They are players who also know when to make runs beyond. Someone like Noni Madweke understands this. And Raheem Sterling knows how to enter the box lately in the far post area for tapping. Something that he did in 2018-2019 for Manchester City. Olinse, who's more likely to be signed by Chelsea this summer, is a player who can give Chelsea a lot of dynamism from this position. He's very good with the ball at his feet. He's a creative winger. He's a winger who can look to play the ball and he's an incredible finisher, looking to actually finish the ball in the far post area. And uh, I believe his work rate is also quite great. His stamina, his strength, his ability to hold up the ball and his ability not to be afraid to dribble and take on his fullback will be a great asset to Chelsea in the coming days. Looking at Raheem Sterling, Raheem Sterling is a player who understands this position. Raheem Sterling down the left is a very deadly threat. He's an excellent dribbler of the ball in this kind of position. He's a player who understands this position quite well. He's a player who likes to run at his fullback. And in these tight situations, Raheem Sterling is a player who can look to give you those uh, that uh, penalty and also Noni Madweke is also good in this position. 
Let's look at the center forward. Now, the center forward is a crucial, uh, is a critical position because Chelsea have been linked with their uh, numerous players. But so far, the choice is between Christopher Nkunku and Nicholas Jackson. Uh, with regards to how Mariska and who he will prefer to occupy this position. Now, the center forward position is very crucial in that he's the player who looks to actually play as a false nine either, dropping deep in this kind of position to create numerical overloads in midfield to allow his team to progress the ball forward. Very good on the ball, very good at receiving the ball with his back to goal, a player who's good at link up. And uh, both Jackson and uh, Nkuku are very good, but the key differentiating factor in this position is the finishing. And the number nine should be a very deadly finisher in that he will receive a lot of balls and he should be the player who looks to attack the, uh, the six yard space. He should be an incredible finisher because a lot of through balls will be played to him. And this is where uh, we are going to experience challenges at this system because uh, Jackson has really, really squandered a lot of opportunities for Chelsea this season. And because Jackson has been really poor in front of goal, this might actually cost him his position at this Chelsea team. Because you remember, Jackson is very poor in 1v1 situations. He's very poor when it comes to... His, he lacks a lot of confidence in front of goal. And because of this situation, what you're going to realize is that he's more likely not to, going to be picked. And rather, Christopher Nkunku is actually going to be the one who will take up his position. Nkunku is quite dynamic. Nkuku can play really well in this kind of position where he can be deployed as a false nine. He understands that role. He is also very technically gifted more than Jackson. He's an incredible finisher compared to Jackson. And if the ball is played to his feet, he's very good at dribbling and actually looking to make things happen. Now, Mareska's uh, lineup that I will pick is this. He needs to sign a new goalkeeper. Otherwise, the back four remains as I had stated with James... Kukurela in the fullback position, Colwill and Toss in the centre back position, Enzo Fernandez deeper, Caicedo and Palma in the I8 position, Raheem Sterling, Olise in the wide areas, and Christopher Kunku leading the line. Questions will be asked on where uh, other players such as Mudrik will be deployed. So Mareska will uh, will experience problems uh, looking to try and actually pick his starting eleven. The starting 11 on paper can look deadly, but it depends with the chemistry of the players on the pitch. If you agree with my starting 11, you can uh, share in, your, in the comments area. And if you have any disagreements with it, you can also communicate your best starting 11 that you think Mareska should pick. I'm really open to hear your suggestions and I'm really asking you to continue watching our videos and how we continue to tactically break down Mareska's uh, time at Chelsea. I'll also talk about one huge tactical challenge that Enzo Maresca will experience when he comes to Chelsea. Stick around for that video and if you've enjoyed this video do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and have a nice time.